Daniel chapter 3, verse 8. Nebuchadnezzar has set up his image. Everybody's called to fall down and worship it. And we come to verse 8. Wherefore, that time certain Chaldeans, part of Babylon, came near and accused the Jews. You're always going to have somebody as a child of God turn you in. Pastor, you know what that guy's saying? Pastor, you know what that guy's saying about Christmas? You know what that guy's saying about my Bible? You know what that guy's saying that, that what I'm doing, what my family is doing is sin? Do you know he's out? I, I can imagine how many people have gone to church Sunday morning. You know, there's a guy down there in Daytona Beach, Florida, aggravating the farmer's market, screaming and hollering. Not saying that he's preaching the gospel. Or they do say, hey, something about God or that. I can just imagine the preachers, they excuse what we do because they don't do nothing for Jesus. But, and it's got to be, it's got to be a wonder because we read, it says, fall down. And I can imagine this plain Adora, everybody, their faces to the ground, their butts in the air, and three, three, only three Hebrews. I should say, only three that are Hebrew are standing up like, no, nope, we're not doing it. And we run this story to a book that we've already studied and go back to Esther, where Mordecai, the whole world bows down before Haman. And Mordecai says, I'm not doing it. The whole Christian Republican world, Donald Trump, old Donald Trump, he said Jesus, Donald Trump. And I look at, no, the guy's a sinner. The guy needs to be saved. The guy is full of pride. The guy has been married three times. The guy has bankrupted his company. So, oh, bless me. I ain't falling before no man. I don't care who the man is. I'm looking for a wife. I'm looking to get married a third time. You know, the, you know what the first two what? God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit are first, and I love them before I love you. I expect you to do the same thing. If you want to, you know, marry me and, and not serve the Lord no more, fine. You do what you're going to do. I'm going to serve the Lord. And as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You don't like it, you can move out. <laughs> Plain and simple. So, tattletailers, they rat. <laughs> and we're going to see that with Daniel, but right now... And everybody says, where is Daniel? And we don't know where Daniel is. The Holy Spirit didn't want to record Daniel. Daniel had his reasons. I don't think Daniel would have fallen down before that image. And they spank and said unto the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. And that, that's just like a title. Thou, O king, has made a decree, a law. It's a law. That every man that shall hear the sound of the, oh, here we go, cornet, flute, harp, sackbuck, sultry, and dulcimer. Sackbuck is a type of bagpipe. It's been missing. No, the dulcimer has been missing. There it is. We have six, five, and six of the mentions of the music. All kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. See that? Fall down. Three men, we're going to learn, have been standing. It's like, uh, how would you put that to my life? The church is singing a hymn that is not approved of God. It's not correct. Or the national anthem, I'm sitting there. His lips ain't moving. And if my lips are moving, I ain't singing the words of the hymn. I'm singing my own words. 
You see, I the thing is, I listen to classical music. I listen to hymns while I'm re reading my Bible, studying my Bible. They're instrumental. I have, through my heart over the years, taken a hymn, instrumental, and I added or sang my own words to God through that hymn. Now that image, it's gold, okay? We got it. We looked at that measurements last night. What is an image? I'm glad you asked. Genesis. Here he goes, other parts of the Bible again. Genesis 31. Our church don't do that. We just read. Okay, move to the next one. Genesis 31, 19. We don't even do that since that. We just... Rachel, Rachel. Genesis 31, 19. Rachel had stolen the images. Uh-oh. Well, that really helps us, doesn't it? She stole pictures, images, verse 30. Wherefore hast thou stolen my God? Uh-oh. So images can be gods, they're at least gods to labor, and they can be stolen. It still doesn't help me. Verse 32. Whomsoever finds thy gods, let him not live, capital punishment, before his burden discern what thine with me. And Jacob did not know it was Rachel. And then, verse 34. Rachel's able to put in the camel furniture and sit down and, you know, I can't get up because I'm pregnant. Like, wow, you never got up before, Rachel? You just didn't want your father to find it. <laughs> what a lie. Isn't it great the Bible that doesn't lie records lies? Okay, so that doesn't help us. We just know that Rachel can steal an image. Or Samuel. Scripture was scripture. It would be nice. King James 1611 Bible would be much better. And Michael, David's wife, Took an image. Oh, everybody's stealing image. So it's in the Bible. Somebody, you know, an image is something somebody steals, and laid it in the bed, and put a pillow of goat's hair for the bolster for the head, and covered it with a cloth. Well, it's to look like David. And I, you know it wasn't the statue of David by Michael Andrew because he wasn't around yet. And they sent messengers and they look in the bed and they said, David's sick, so it looks like David. Chapter 6, verse 5. Now this is the Philistines. They've had the Ark of the Covenant for a while. Wherefore ye shall make images of your hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids. And images of your mice that marred the land. So images is a representation of a noun, person, place, or thing. Here, hemorrhoids. <laughs> I bet you that was a pretty picture to, to open up the ark and see these golden hemorrhoids. <laughs> and mice. It looked like mice because it was supposed to be representation of mice. That was the plague. Michael took an image that looked like David. It didn't have no hair on it, so she put some hair on it, put it in bed with a pillow and covered it with the blanket. They looked at it and they saw the thing. Evidently, David had a statue of himself in his house or something that looked like him. That when the men came in, oh, there's David in bed. He's sick. He ain't got no pulse. Go back to the king. And it's able for something for, for Rachel to steal. That it is the gods of Laban. I come from the Roman Catholic Church. 
St. Mary's of the Sea in New London, Connecticut. There are images all around when you go into a Catholic church. When I was in those, that church growing up through the year, there was images of, of, of the sanctions, what do they say, of the cross. You know, here's Jesus carrying the cross. Here's Jesus falling down with the cross. Here's Jesus is talking to the women, you know, bearing the cross. Here is Jesus, you know, and all around. They're all images. And there's the big Mary image. And there's an image of this. And an image of that. Of men. Of women. They would have, I, I don't, I, I'm just going to say St. Christopher, but I don't remember what his name was. But he's the patron saint of automobiles. He was this little statue you put on your, on your dashboard. Then the problem with this saint was they were finding his image, his icon, on the dashboard of cars that were involved in automobile accidents. So they had to fire him because he wasn't doing his job. And it was their gods. And it was Laban's gods. Evidently, there were Rachel's gods too. Now, here's this image in Daniel. And we've been talking about it. It's a golden image, and we don't know what the image is. I don't know if we can safely assume it's the image that he dreamed about in chapter 2. Or, that doesn't say. Because you can't, because the image in in uh, Daniel chapter two was gold, brass, iron, clay. It wasn't all gold. Maybe it was his head. Nebuchadnezzar. We don't know, but that's what an image was. That it has two measurements, being some kind of cylinder. A head would be a perfect example. A body of a man. But, verse 11. And whoso falleth not down to worship. That's the order. That's the law. That he should be cast into the midst of a bar burning fiery furnace. That's the law. They go up to the king. King say, did you not say this? Is this not written in the law? And then they go right into it. They don't even let the king answer. There are certain Jews whom thou is forbidden for Jews that have images and idolatry. It's in the Big Ten, Exodus 20. There he goes again, another book of the Bible. Exodus 20. Verse 3. Go back to the ten. <laughs> and it's throughout the law. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. What did Nebuchadnezzar, my God, see that God's G-O-D-S? Remember that in verse 3. Because we're going to see that again in chapter 3. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven, there's that image, or anything that is in the heavens above, Stars, moons, planets, the dragon. Or that's in the earth beneath. Earthworms, beetles. Or that's in the waters of the earth. Fish, lobsters. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I am the Lord thy God, and a jealous God, this is an iniquity that falls upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo, do not hate God. And they can't have children because they've been made eunuchs. But did you get that? That's the second commandment of the Big Ten. Daniel 3, verse 12, 12, that's a, that's a Jewish number, that's the 12 tribes of Israel. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the providence, chapter 2, 
verse number 49. No, 49. And Daniel requested of the king, and he sent Sadrach, Meshach, and Indigo over the affairs of the provinces of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate the of the king. Maybe those in the gate didn't have to bow down. I don't, I don't know. But there it is. They have been given authority by Daniel and by the king. Shadrach, Meshach, and Inigo, Daniel 3.12. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy... What did Exodus say? Nor worship the golden... What did Exodus say? Notice how the Holy Spirit puts that in there. Because that matches the law. That matches the Big Ten. Now the fact is what the Holy Spirit has told us. Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo are correct. Which thou was set up. Now when Peter and John are preaching Jesus in Jerusalem. They are called before the Sanhedrin twice. And the first time they said, don't you preach that man's name here no more. And they're like, you know, we ought to obey God more than man. Bye. And they're arrested again and they're brought before him. We told you don't preach the name of Jesus. And they preached the name of Jesus and they were beaten for it. And they walked out happy and glorious to take a beating for Jesus. We are to obey the government, all its laws, including vaccines and boosters, which is not a violation of the Bible. Give me a chapter and verse where it is. That if you don't take the vaccine, you don't take the booster, according to the orders of your leader, our country of president. You are in violation of the scriptures. Even if you say we're losing our freedom, we don't have no freedom to lose. You're going to stand before God at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, wherever your stance is with salvation. And you're going to be found at fault. I wouldn't get the vaccine. I wouldn't get the booster. For a Christian, wood, hay, and stubble. You say, is that serious? Anything against the Bible, anything against what Jesus said, anything what the Bible tells us to do and you don't do, you get wood, hay, and stubble. Everything that you don't do, that the Bible and Jesus tells us to do in Paul, and you don't do it, wood, hay, and stubble, and there's no rewards for that. Romans 13, uh, the, the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter writes to us, we're to obey the government, the government except where it violates the scriptures. And the, and the ruler of their time was Nero, who was executing Christians for the fun of it. Nero had one to, hey, you know what? We're, I'm going to have a garden party. And he heard somewhere, Jesus is the light of the world. I let my light shine. Nero heard that somehow. He grabbed a bunch of Christians, soaked them in tar, put them up on one of those tiki poles, whatever you call it, and lit the Christians on fire and had his banquet say, we're letting God light up our party. You see the light of the world? That ruler is the one that Paul said, is the one that Peter said, you better obey him. I guarantee there were plenty of people. You couldn't preach Jesus. You couldn't preach the Bible. You couldn't preach it. I guarantee many of them did and suffered. And there are, there are people and religionists and all that. They're out there. Oh, you know, we're suffering persecution. No, you're suffering because you're an idiot. I know a story of a church that I went to. And we started our public ministry, our street ministry. And we went to the police department. And we told them what we were going to do. We told them who was going to be about. Even for a while, the cops said, listen, give us a phone call and tell us when you're going to be there. And we appreciate it. And we did. We called them before we went and everything. 
Uh, our church was against us. They had a ministry on the other side of our county. And they were at this location of a flagpole. And the police said, you can't be here. Oh, yes, we can. We can be there. No, you can't. And they went back to that very spot, and they were arrested. Oh, we're arrested. We're being persecuted. No, come to find out that that flagpole was private property. Even though it was in the middle of the road, it had been purchased by an individual, and it was paid by an individual who paid taxes to the county. You didn't belong there. With us, we have had it. You're on the sidewalk. You're on the sidewalk. You're in the middle of the road of our, of our uh, farmer's market. And my lawyer went in there and said, no, that's, the law is they are right. And when we when we have been approached by the police, we have said to the officers, officer, if we are incorrect, we're going to leave. We don't want to cause any problem. We're going to leave, but I'm going to tell you right now, if we are incorrect, my lawyer tells me I am wrong, I apologize to you, and I apologize to the farmer's market. But let me tell you, I'm going to go to my lawyer. I'm going to ask what he said. I'm going to tell him the circumstance. We got it all in video and everything. If we are correct, Lord willing, we will be here next week doing exactly what we're doing. And if you want to do anything about it, you're going to have to get your lawyers, my lawyers. And we've been there for six years. There's a difference between doing what is right and holy, approved by God, and there's a difference of being a jerk. I don't believe there should be any public street preaching about abortion. Jesus didn't tell us to go in the world and preach murder or abortion. He went in the world and preached the gospel. That's what Jesus said. So these three men are standing to the second commandment of the Big Ten. I ain't bowing down before that. And my question is, it's not, okay, what's everybody doing? What are all the other Jews doing? Why is there only three? You tell me there's only three Jews out of the whole congregation of all the world as far as Nebuchadnezzar's land? Verse 13, rebellion. 13th rebellion in the Bible. Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, this guy lost his temper. He's already mad, angry. What if it wasn't true? Let's just say for a minute. Let's say, you know, these people lied and it wasn't true. He's in his rage. This is how much of a God, this golden image, you don't want to do what I told you to? You say, well, I'm being persecuted. Okay. I went to court and the judge threw the book at me. Oh, wow. So what'd you do? I was on the highway. Oh, okay. Yeah, what happened? I was doing 56 and a 55, and the, 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 the judge gave me a $250 fine. Wait a minute. What's the speed limit? 55. How fast were you going? 56. You broke the law, paid the $250 to stop complaining. Uh, I don't think it's... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Shut up. You see, the problem is today, if it's against the law... In the God of freedom, I can do whatever I want. Like those truckers in Canada. Well, we're for the freedom. No, they are breaking the law, arrest them, confiscate their vehicles, take the keys, and lock them up. And there are Christians in America and in Canada. Oh, we support the truckers. We support the truckers. You are supporting criminals. After all, the Jews supported a criminal when they said, we'll take Barabbas, hang Jesus. Is that not the case? 
the innocent man. Give him the cross. The man that, that was almost the crimes of Donald Trump. Because July 6th of last year, there was an insurrection, there was a theft, and there was somebody killed. <laughs> Give us Barabbas, the criminal. We'll take him. We'll be nice to him. Friend, you're going to find before Jesus Christ, when you're saved or you're lost, you're going to find you're in the wrong. Sometimes, like Peter and John who got a beating, Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo are going to go into the flames. We know that. I mean, <laughs> nothing new. Sometimes if you got to do what's right in the Bible, you got to take man's punishment. But you'll be rewarded by God. And you'll only be rewarded when you disobey the government, when the government has violated what the Bible says. Now, if the government says you got to pay taxes to a church in New England, to the Congregational Church, which happened, and you had your livestock confiscated, you were beaten, you were put to the, to the gallows, you were put in, in the stocks on the greens of Norwich, Connecticut, I've got the pictures. And you say, well, I ain't doing it because I ain't supporting that church. Because that church is killing Christians. That church is persecuting Christians. That church does not stand for the gospel in Jesus Christ. They stand for infant baptism and everything against the Bible. I ain't supporting that church. You are right in the eyes of God, but you are wrong in the eyes of the government. And they're going to persecute you. You got to take it. Now, when you're sitting out front of your house, you got all your junk laid out with, with dollar and two dollar price tags and ten dollar price tag, and people are looking through your stuff and, and you collected money for your stuff and they're putting their cars and they're driving off and the cops show up and or the city shows up and says, All right, show us your permit to have yard sale or garage sale. Well, I didn't get a permit. I didn't know I needed a permit. Well, you need a permit. that You have to go out to City Hall. You have to apply or Town Hall. You have to get a permit for a yard. I got rights. I got freedom. And when they shut the whole thing down, and if you cause such a display that you get a slap by the, by the town for a fee or even end up in jail, you deserved it. Okay? When you're going down the road and you see those red and blue lights and you pull over and they bring you to jail because they find out you have no license, you in trouble. You've been drinking and driving, you in trouble. Now, you've been pulled over and they say, listen, sir, we, we see your car. you got a Christian bumper sticker in that car. That's illegal. You take it off right now. Or you, no, I ain't taking it off. Bible says go in all the world, preach the gospel. The Bible says put the scriptures on your house, put the scriptures on your boat, put and put them in your heart and put them on your hands. Well, we don't we have that here. Oh, well, you're gonna have to do what you're gonna have to do. Then you're gonna have to take a punishment by the civil government. And God's may I like that. We we'll see too many Christians in the Latin seeing church. Eh? They're we're persecuted, we're persecuted. No, you're just being the jerk. Listen, I came this close to being arrested for a street preacher. I said, let me, let me go home. And I, my lawyer was on the phone. My lawyer's like, if they arrest you, call me. I'll support you. I'll be down to the jail, do whatever he needs to do. I said, you know what? I said, let me go home. And you work it out. And the attorney for the city police department told my lawyer to tell him, I am glad he handled it like that. Man, he, he never disrespects my officers. He is very respectful. And he said, you know what? We're going to let the lawyers handle it. I'm going to go home. I, the lawyer's telling me I'm doing right. I, I'll be back next week. And through a proper testimony, I bet you a lot of police officers, I bet you a lot of people have gotten saved, gotten closer through God by being right, and not being a jerk, 
Because you know Nebuchadnezzar is going to step up pretty soon, and it's going to look like he got saved somehow, some way, however they do it back then. And we're going to keep reading. So you got to do it right. There's a wrong way and there's a right way. We get several cases in the Bible. So he gets angry in his rage, and they brought them before, and Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is this true? Again, I don't know where Daniel is. Leave Daniel out. Is this true, O Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo? Do not ye serve my God. What did Exodus 20 say? Or worship the golden image which I have set up. What did, Revelation, uh, what did Exodus 20 say? Did Shadrach, Meshach, and the gold do right? Yes, by God and the law. Through Nebuchadnezzar and the government? No. Shadrach, Meshach, and the gold are going to go in the fire. But who went in the fire with them? God. <laughs> Serve my God, worship my golden image. For the Jew, Exodus 20, what we read is a violation of the scriptures. Can't do it. Sorry. You can't be preaching here. Am I in a public area? Oh, yeah. Bible says going all the world, preach the gospel. Now, if I go on some if I go into apartment, if I go on property that is not public, if I go to Walmart and I set up and right in the middle whatever aisle, and I set up and I get the I get the, the horns and all that, and, and I start preaching, and the manager comes up to me and says, Listen, you can't be doing that. Oh, I can be. And the manager calls the cops and has me arrested for preaching in Walmart. I am in the wrong because that's private property. Though it's not. That, that's, uh, that's a whole other case I've talked to lawyers about. But it's right now it's illegal to do that. If I go to one of these, these amusement parks or one of these great vacation, visitation place. And if I go on their property and preach the gospel, if I am arrested after them asking me to stop and leave or don't do it, I've been properly arrested and I ain't going to get no rewards by God. Oh, I'm preaching the gospel. The wrong way, the wrong method. You can't do wrong. You can't be illegal and expect God to bless you in your illegalness. Well, what? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And there are proper Christian lawyers and there are Christian street preachers who have been doing it long enough we can explain to you. Uh, I will talk to you and say, listen, I want to, it may not be street preaching, but whatever public ministry, I will talk to you. And, and one of the things I will tell you to do, I will tell you, is go to the city police department or the town police department and say, I want to speak to somebody in charge. And you tell them what you want to do and how you want to do it. And then you ask them, say, well, what are the ways and what are the illegal ways? So verse 14 backs up the stand of Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo that they can't do what Nebuchadnezzar tells them to do. And if they do, according to the law, they are in great trouble because they may not go to Abraham's bosom when they die. Now, if you be ready, verse 15, if you be ready. Okay, here we go. Wait a minute, hold on. Let me comb my hair. Okay, we're ready. What? What is that? If you be ready. That at what time you hear the sound of cornet, flute, harp, sackbook, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music. So this is something that didn't 
when we started Daniel chapter three, it was it was the uh, wait, what's that word I'm looking for? Uh, oh, what's that word? Oh, image. When you you first bring it, where's the word? I can't see it here. Dedication. But we've gone now more than just the dedication. It's almost like in verse 15, I read it as Nebuchadnezzar said, all right, he presses the button. All right, start up everything. Put the quarter in the jukebox. Boogie woogie. And I, before I was saved, I have been to parties where, you know, I sat there and the music was playing. Somebody's coming to me, why ain't you dancing? Why ain't you got a drink in your hands? I've been to parties like that. Number one, I don't dance. Number two, uh, yeah, I don't have, when I was unsaved, I didn't have a drink in my hands. But <laughs> That's how the place. That's a party. I, I, I'm sitting down at a party where you're not dancing, you don't have a drink. You, that looks, well, this is the same thing with Chadrach, Meshach, and Indigo. I always wonder, what's the other Jews saying? He fall down and worship the image, violation of the law, which I have made well. Well. Remember, he's angry. Well, who do you think you are? But if you worship not, Exodus 20. Now, do you see... Nebuchadnezzar is doing something, or he's being worked by Satan, or he's being worked by the Holy Spirit through his mouth, is speaking what violates the, the law. And he doesn't even know what he's saying. Unless the indoctrination of Daniel chapter 1, he knows the Jewish way. He knows what their law says. Ye shall be cast the same hour when the music begins into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Say that four times. And who is that God, big G? Now, who is the God of all the gods, he's saying? Because remember, this guy has a God for everything. He's got a God for the toenails, and he's got a God for the fingernails. He's got the God for the thumb, and the God for the middle finger, and the God for the camel. And the God. <laughs> Who is that God above all? The God that's above me, Nebuchadnezzar. That shall deliver you out of my hands. You're going to see him in a moment, Nebi. Three sixteen. Pay attention to the three sixteens in the King James Bible. They're interesting. You know, the first time the angel of the Lord shows up is three sixteen Genesis. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went and got all the camels. And closed down the Babylonian highways that no one could come in and out of Babylon. In the name of freedom. Nope. They blackballed and they boycotted all the fuel that went into their fiery furnace and would not support that company. Nope. There is no protest, 16, 17, and 18. And yet there are Christians out there protesting and screaming. I wonder how many that, that broke through the, the property of the White House. I wonder how many of those idiots were Christians. We're being persecuted. We're, we're being sent to jail because you crossed property that wasn't yours. 
all in the name of Donald Trump, of course. I don't like what he says. I don't care what you don't like. I'm telling you the truth. That's why you don't like it. We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. What it means is a proper, we don't care what our answer is going to be. We're not going to give it no thought what we say. We are going to put on faith. And I believe that these words of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are proper words of respect and honor to their king. Which I would find very far short of a Christian if they would get into the audience face to face with President Joe Biden. <laughs> You're not my president. And you would ruin all aspects of trying to witness to him and First Lady Jill by you being a jerk. I ain't gonna trust your God. You see what you see what people say who are Christians, you see what they're doing out there? I, I know. I hear it all the time with the public ministry. I hear it all the time when I'm witnessing to people. Well, I know a I know. I wish they shut up too. <laughs> I'm, I had the same man one time laughing. He was like, what? I said, yeah, I wish those Christians would shut up too. <laughs> they give a very poor testimony. And it makes it hard. But I believe these men are very proper, respectful to the king. If it be so, our God, capital G, whom we serve, ooh, that's a kick in the butt to the king. <laughs> We're not going to serve your idol, but we will serve God. God is the one we're going to serve, not that golden image, which is his God. That's what anger is. He's already angry. That's what anger is the worst. And Nebuchadnezzar is not their God. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. That's the difference. Mary can't deliver you from nothing. What's the difference between your religion and Jesus? He's able to deliver me. Now, there have been many, many, I don't know how many Christians who buy faggots, who have been tortured, who have been killed and thrown into bags with, with cats and snakes into a river to drown. There have been saved Jews who have been in the hands of the Nazis in, in the Holocaust of, of the execu executions. They died. They died miserable deaths. But today they are absent from the body and present with the Lord. He was able to deliver them. Allah can't do that. I don't care how many virgins he promised you. You die in the name of Allah, you go to hell. With the Catholics and the Baptists and the Presbyterians. And the Mormons. And the Jews. <laughs> Make it even worse. The Jews will be in hell if they don't believe on Jesus. Able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. <laughs> That's what they're hoping. <laughs> and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Whoa. We have a God that's mightier than you, king. We have a God that's mightier than the flames of that fire, O king. He's already mad. When we start off tonight's lesson, he's fuming. He's fuming again. But 
If not, if we go into that fire and we die. Now, do you see the faith in verse 17? God is going to take care of us. Now, if we die in that fire, verse 17, they have the hope that God is going to do something. Maybe they thought that God's going to send angels or fire or something. And I don't think they had any idea that they were going to be thrown into that furnace and delivered. But if not, If we die, be it known unto thee, O king. Now, verse 18 has been the verse of many Christians who have died by faggots and torture in the Inquisition and being put into bags and drowned in a river and being buried up with their heads sticking out of the ground and honey put on them for the ants. See, many Christians don't know the church age. And they died miserable deaths. But they didn't bow down to Mary. They didn't bow down to the Catholic Church. They didn't bow down and receive the Mass. They didn't bow down and, and, and profess Allah. They didn't give in to the Mormons. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, Exodus 20, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up, Exodus 20. So whether we live somehow, whatever God does, or whether we die, we are not bowing down to that image or you as God. Now, if Nebuchadnezzar would have said something like, all right, bow down to me as your king, as your ruler, as reverence. You say, that's okay. Go back to Esther, read Mordecai. Again, the book of Esther. Now look at Daniel and Esther now. Look. How many Jews, and there was a lot of them, did not bow down before Haman? How many Jews did Haman get mad at personally for not bowing down to him? One. How many stood upright at the music of the of the image of Daniel chapter 3. 3. How many preached what the Bible says just before the days of the, the worldwide flood came? 1. How many men were preaching in the city of Jerusalem in the book of Acts 2? John and, John and Peter. The Bible believes in Christ-centered, God-reverend, King James, I'll throw that in there. Doing all possibly what the Bible says to do, and we, we're all sinners, is the minority. And if you want to talk about minorities in, in America, in the world, then you better give us Christians who are doing right the jobs. But you don't, so there's no equal rights movement. In fact, I can tell you, Christians, including myself, because I'm a born-again, Bible-believing evangelistic Christian witnessing I've been fired twice I had a job because I was a Christian they, they tried to fire me 
and they couldn't find a way to fire me, and I was one of their valuable uh, uh, employees. It literally took a stupid moment of the government to get me lose my job. And God's been taking care of me. He's delivered me. With the street ministry, he's taking care of me. They're mad at me. Because they know they can't do anything. And the Lord laid in my heart, because I want to go back. I've been, having, I've been having medical issues. If I go back, one of the things that they point to their sign is like, I'm not under that sign. I am not part of the farmer's market. You can't put restrictions on me. Now the law can, but I've been in rights with the law. You can't be an idiot and then cry, fall, oh, fall, fall, fall. You got to do that's right. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did what was right. I believe they did it even with respect. Look what they said. O king. O king. Nebuchadnezzar. O Nebuchadnezzar. And let me ask you something. How would your Christian today, especially your Republican Christian, what would they say today if they came face to face with President Joe Biden? I'd be afraid to find out what they're going to say. And I don't get in politics. I don't vote. I'm not, Dem I've been accused of being, I'm not Democrat. I'm not Republican or whatever office it is. I'm a born again, Bible believing Christian that preaches the gospel. I will tell you when you're wrong and I will tell you when you're right. I will guide you to what is right and what's wrong. And these are one of the stories in Daniel chapter 3 is. When you're going to take a butt kicking for God, you better make sure it's a right butt kicking. Because I would hate to take a butt kicking for God and get up to heaven and have God kick you in the butt saying, you're an idiot. That was stupid. 